On April 7th, USCIS announced they are now waiving green card interviews for some family-based immigrants after filing the I-751 removal of conditions application. However, not everyone is going to qualify for an interview waiver, and USCIS has specific criteria that they will use to evaluate whether or not to request an interview. Keep watching because we are going to take a closer look at what these criteria are and how to make sure that your I-751 has everything you need to get your interview waived. And if this is your first time watching my channel, please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you can be updated regularly with immigration news updates. And if you would like my help on your case, please give us a call at 212-248-7907 so we can schedule you for a case evaluation. So underneath this new policy, exactly who is eligible to have their interview waived by USCIS? This update applies to all immigrants who are filing for the removal of conditions application on their current two-year residency card. This is a special card that is given to couples who apply for a green card through marriage who have not yet reached their two-year anniversary of marriage upon the date of approval or those who have entered the U.S. on an immigrant visa before reaching the two-year anniversary of the marriage. Within 90 days before this card expires, the couple must jointly file an I-751 application to remove conditions on residence in order to attain that 10-year permanent resident card. This means that USCIS officers are now incentivized to waive interviews for applicants who meet the risk assessment criteria. So if you are filing the I-751 application to remove your conditions, it is important to review everything thoroughly to make sure that it has everything the officer needs to not only approve your case, but also to waive your interview. So what are the five elements that USCIS will be looking at in order to waive the interview in your I-751 application? Number one, the officer will be looking for strong evidence that your marriage is real. For this, you may want to provide evidence that you submitted initially with your application, but most importantly, you must include evidence that you have collected since the date of the approval of your two-year residency card up until the date that you file your I-751 application. This can include proof of you and your spouse having lived together, such as a rental agreement, lease, or a mortgage in both of your names. You can also use joint utility bills, homeowner's insurance, or renter's insurance, as long as they include both you and your spouse. You can also include joint evidence of financial assets, including bank accounts and savings accounts. Also remember to include joint tax filings for any of the years that you've been married. If you've had children during the course of the marriage, make sure to include a copy of their birth certificates. And you can use any secondary evidence, such as proof of joint trips, holiday celebrations, pictures together, and anything else that you think can help prove that your marriage is legitimate. The key to all of this is to make sure that you include as much joint evidence as possible. The more paper, the better for these sort of evaluations. Number two, the officer will determine if there is any indication of fraud or misrepresentation within these documents. This means that it is important to submit official copies of the documents with accurate and up-to-date information. You also want to make sure that your application contains all of the necessary signatures. And make sure you check your evidence to make sure that there is no inconsistent information. Number three, the immigration officer will then look to see if your case contains any complex facts or issues that must be resolved. This is why that it is important that your application is thorough and includes more evidence rather than less. If there are any complex issues with your case, you want to provide enough supporting evidence so that the immigration officer is not left with any questions. This might mean that you include a sworn affidavit attesting to the facts of your case and how they are supported by the evidence that you provide. Number four, the last thing that the interview is going to do in order to decide whether the interview should be waived is to see whether you have any criminal history that could cause your case to get denied. Having a criminal case does not necessarily mean that your case will automatically be denied, but it does mean that your application may need to include more information. With the exception of traffic violations, you must disclose every time you were cited, arrested, or charged with a crime. Even if the charges were later dismissed 
or if your criminal record has been expunged. Working with an immigration lawyer can help you ensure that all court records and documentation necessary is included to prove that you are not disqualified from a green card. Number five, if you are applying for a waiver to show that your spouse should not be included in your case, such as for an extreme cruelty or battery waiver or a waiver due to divorce and the termination of your marriage, the officer will also then look to see whether you have provided sufficient evidence to support your need for the waiver. Maybe you filed the green card initially together with your spouse, but now you are divorced or separated, or you have suffered extreme cruelty during your marriage, and now it is necessary for you to file by yourself. The officer is still able to waive your interview if your application contains everything necessary in order to prove that you qualify for the waiver and the officer is not left with any unanswered questions. This means that not only do you need to include marriage, evidence to prove that your relationship and marriage was real, but also evidence that you qualify for whichever waiver that you seek to apply for. The best thing you can do to not just increase your chances of getting your interview waived, but simply to get your application approved is to work with an experienced immigration attorney like me. If you do need assistance with your case, give us a call 212-248-7907. I have worked with hundreds of complex and complicated I-751s, including ones where we request waivers, and many of my I-751 clients have already been waived for interviews even before this guidance. Be sure to watch the rest of my marriage videos for more helpful tips and information. I will include a link to my other videos here so that you can prepare as best as possible. I will also continue to bring you more immigration news as it becomes available. So if you have not yet done so yet, make sure that you subscribe now and click on the button so that you receive all notifications. Click here to watch this video next and I'll see you there.